Zero, Oscar. Zero, Oscar. Two, one. We're at Wellstead Street, approaching the buzzard public house. Over. Brace yourself. Car, well, I'll go back in there and talk to your sparring partner, all right? Do you understand? No, you two. Detections. I need them yesterday. On to it, Gov. Gov, two guys sat in a pub. Both of them been there a while. No contact between them whatsoever. Hang on, it's just a joke. Wait till you get to the bit about Batman and Robin. One of them, Carl, is, is chatting up a girl. The other one, Joel, sat beside him, quietly minding his own business. And then out of the blue, for no apparent reason, Joel picks up a bottle and smashes it over Carl's head. No joke, then. It's a pretty conventional fight from there on in, until PC's Gail and Robert... Batman and Robin. Uh, ...arrive and save the day. Carl Coveney had stitches, but is OK. Joel Fuller was arrested and then promptly broke down in tears. Has this Joel got full? No, nothing. Statement shed any light? Hardly. I don't know what time the dynamic duo wrote them up, but it's not exactly poetry. What do you expect, Rhymes? Verbs would be nice. Right, I'm going to go and see if Joel's resurfaced. You want a bodyguard? Nah. He'd had a skimful, so I'll be impressed if he can lift his eyelids. Right, in case you didn't know, you're A, hungover, B, Joel Fuller and C, in a whole heap of trouble. Do you remember much about last night? Enough. Fancy talking me through it? I bought with some guys, nothing to tell. Well, not quite. I wouldn't mind knowing why. Well, that's not much of an explanation, is it? OK, the man you attacked last night, Cole Coveney, he says he's never seen you before. Is that true? Yeah. According to PC Gale's report, Cole was playing away from home. Do you know his wife, Joel? For the tape, the suspect shook his head. What about the woman he was with? I don't know nothing about either of them. And then why attack him? He's getting on my nerves. Loads of people get on my nerves, but I don't cane them with a bottle. I was drunk. Do you drink a lot? Booze isn't a problem. So what is? Okay, look, why don't you just tell me a little bit about yourself? What? Talk to me. Why? Because I want to know more about you. You got anything better to do? No. What do you do for a living? Mechanic. I was. In the garage I was at, I had to make some cutbacks. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You're married? Yep. And? And what? Does she have a name? Lucy. You've been married long? Eight years. Kids? One. Archie's four now. What do you think Lucy'd have to say about what happened last night, Joel? Look, um, hmm. Well, we, we done here, cause I wanna go. 
on my own, please. Are you okay, Joel? Yeah. I just, I'm hungover. I'm tired. I just want to go home, please. Here's a charge of bail notice. Tells you when to appear at magistrate's court. One wallet, one set of keys, and a one pound four pence in change. Sign there, say you got your property back all right. Stick that lot in your pocket. It's all yours, Stevie. Is he sobered up yet? Just about. So why you did it? Not really. Something alright there. Eh? I'll have a good shift here. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. It's not every now and then, it's all the time a four-year-old could have written a more coherent statement than that. Here Could you, um... I'll have a word. Thanks. You got a secret admirer out there or something? I wish. No, I'm just a bit worried about this bloke. I don't think his head's in the right place at the moment. I feel bad about just leaving him like that. Well, we're not social workers. If we tried to help everyone we nicked, we'd never get out of here. Mobile data devices, that's what we need. Like a handheld computer that we can take out with us onto the streets. Some forces have got them already, apparently. You can access the station computer wherever you are, and more to the point, you can make notes as you go. See, that way, when you get back, you don't need to deal with all this. What do you reckon? It's an idea. Are you Lucy Fuller? Yeah. Is Joel here? Why, who are you? I'm DS Moss, Sunhill Police. Is he here? He didn't come home last night. Something happened. Can I come in? Yeah, come in. So what's going on? Is Joel all right? He was arrested last night. What? Your husband assaulted a complete stranger in a pub with a bottle. Uh, is the guy all right? Yeah. Joel's never been in a fight in his life. He'd had a lot to drink. He's been charged with unlawful wounding and released on bail. I was hoping he'd come home. Uh, <sighs> Hope you don't mind me asking, but is Joel OK? He seemed a bit low this morning. He's not been great. I know he's not working, is it that? Uh, kind of. It... Joel got laid off about five months ago. We were okay for a while because we had savings to cover the mortgage and stuff, but that soon ran out. I mean, we've, we've been good. We've been cutting back on stuff. We've put the car up for sale. I, I took a job. I do part-time waitressing. Um, don't stop the bills coming in, though, does it? We've missed four mortgage payments in a row now. They're threatening to repossess. Has Joel tried to find work? Tried, but all he knows is being a mechanic. 
It was our anniversary yesterday. I had a massive go at him all over buying me a stupid bunch of flowers. I'm sorry things have been so tough. I'm sure Joel will turn up soon. If he hasn't by the end of play today, give me a bow, yeah? Cheers. See myself out. Joe, where's Stevie? Um, no idea. Joe Fuller's turned up again. Uniform have been called back to the buzzer. Do you want to find her? Get down there. Sure. It's like you're right to be concerned about your man, Joe. Why? What's he done? Something to do with traumatising an landlord's kid. I was in the cellar checking the barrels, and when I come up, I saw him coming out the gents and heading out. And you're sure it was Joel Fuller? Positive. I was about to have a go at him, but then I had Alex in there crying. And has Alex said anything about what happened in there? No. I haven't been able to get a word out of him. Well, can you think of any reason why Fuller might come back? No. Is he a regular? No. Did he go near the tills? No, he... He went near my son. Hi, I'm DS Moss. This is DC Masters. Can I ask you, how did Joel Fuller seem when you saw him? He didn't even look at me. He was out the door so fast. He looked pretty vacant, to be honest. Right. Okay, we need to check out the gents. He hasn't said a word. He's obviously just scared out of his wits. So remind me what we're looking for again. <sighs> Something. Anything. Well, he wasn't cleaning, that's for sure. <sighs> I'm sorry to state the obvious, Stevie, but a screwed up bloke confronting a kid in a gent's toilet. No, I don't buy that he's into kids, if that's what you mean. Just saying. Oh, I've got something here. Assistant lid's been moved. Mm, there's nothing in there. Well, anyone could have moved that. Really? I've never moved a system lid in my life. The system lid's been moved. Do you know anything about that? No, they were all in place last night when I closed up. Okay. Hi, Alex. My name's Stevie. Just want to ask you a question. Man in the toilets. Was he looking for something? Sweetheart. Did the man touch you in any way? Uh, sorry, could we just give him a minute? Sure. Last night before the fight, was Joel Fuller with anyone? Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, earlier he was sat with a guy for a while. Do you know who? Sitting around the estate, comes in a bit. Um, yeah, I've heard some of the kids call him Mick or Mac or something. Anybody else think we're looking at a drug deal? Makes sense to me. Dealers never like carrying the stash on them, so if Joel was dealing last night, maybe he hid the gear in the toilet. Maybe. This is Joel Fuller last night, about an hour before he assaulted Carl Coveney. We don't know who this is yet, but according to the landlord, he's called Mac or something. Lives on the estate, we'll check him on Crimmond. But look, so Joel disappears. Presumably to the gents. Then after about a minute, he comes back. There, look, that's money changing hands, and I don't think that's for the next pint. So Joel gives this bloke money, then the bloke leaves. I think it's a drugs deal, but I think Joel's doing the buying, not the selling. But why didn't he just take the drugs to the toilet if he said that's where they were? Well, I'm not saying he didn't. But I don't think that Joel is into drugs, using or selling. Why not? Because there's a ordinary decent bloke who bottled someone last night 
Because he's having a tough time at the moment. Look, he, he practically broke down in interview. So I, I went and visited his wife, and she says they're struggling financially, and I think it's taking its toll. Well, if Joel's under pressure, maybe he started using him, and it does happen. He's mixed up, but... Well, I know a way we can find out exactly what he was doing. We'll get a lip reader in, get a copy of the transcript. Five is a drugs deal. Are you all right? Not really. Do you want to get out of here? Yeah. How are your calves? Shocking. How's your salad? Terrible. Why do we come here again? Because it's not a canteen. And it's so pretty. Excuse me. Uh, can I get two spotted dick and custards over here, please? So it was you that ate all the pies, was it? No, we are. <laughs> so come on in. What is it about this fella that's got you so much? Oh, I don't know. Part of me just feel sorry for him. Tell me about his face in the interview room. It just. And the other part? I hate not getting to the bottom of things. That's the control freak in you. What is it about this job, eh? That some days you just come in here, deal with anything, and. Remain disconnected, and then other days, someone or something touches you. Well, I don't know. But what I can never decide is which one I prefer. Cheers. Dear Smos. Okay, I'm on the way. Lit readers arrive, so, um, knock yourself out. Thanks for lunch. We've identified the guy that Joel met in the pub. His name's Martin Croft. Right. Lives on the Maycroft estate. Goes by the nickname of Macca. 26, ex army. Got form for possession and dealing. Ah. Well, let's hope so. Okay. I'll try to. Uh, Stevie, Joe, this is Layla. Layla Maidley. Hi. And Hi. she's doing sterling work for us with the. Um, It's definitely some kind of transaction. Here. Okay, here we go. I thought we agreed 150, not 180. Then the other guy says something, and it's back to Joel. So where is it? That's interesting. The other guy speaks again, then Joel. Can I check? And that's when he goes. Probably to the gents. Sounds like a drug deal to me. For 180 quid, and it seems too much for personal use and not enough to make it worth his while selling it on. C can you get any idea of state of mind from this and the mannerisms? I'd say he's nervous, like it's his first time. Speech patterns are hesitant. When he gets back, all he says is, that's great. And then he hands over the money. Mm. Uh, that me done, then. Um, I think so, don't you? Layla's finished, thank you. Thanks, great. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thanks for your time. See you. Bye. 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 Right. Yeah, you two go back to the buzzard and speak to the kid again, see if he's calmed down enough to... Speak to Alex again. Uh, it's fine. I just want to find out what happened. He hasn't said anything then. Not a word. Shall we? Yeah. Hey, Alex. How are you doing? Oh, do you want to play a game with me? 
Oh, go on, it's a really good game. You don't have to say anything, right? It's all about what happened this morning. And you get a point for a nod, and I get a point for a shake, and the first one to five wins. There's only one rule. You're not allowed to lie. OK, that's one nil to you already. When you saw the man this morning, what was he standing in a cubicle? Two nil to you. OK. Was he standing over the toilet? Three nil already. OK, when you saw him, did he take something out of the thing at the back of the toilet? Four nil. All right, let me think of an easy one. Did he take out a package? Four one at last. Was it a bag? Four two. Was it an envelope? Four three. Okay. A container then. Four four. This is the decider. Whoever gets this wins. All right. Did you see him take a gun out of there? Alex. He was angry. He pointed at me and said he'd kill me if I told anyone. Okay. Well done, Alex. No, no, Lucy, you just stay put. Okay, we'll be there as soon as. All right, listen up a minute. Everything when I see you. Joel Fuller. We don't know for sure whether he's got bullets for his gun or not. Until we do, we work on the basis that he has. OK? His details have been circulated and we've got units out there looking for him. They're focusing on the area surrounding the buzzard. I buy onto CCTV and when we recover the firearm, uniform, we're going to go in and pick Martin Croft up. Joel still hasn't turned up at home, so we're going to go down and get Lucy and bring her in. We've already got a unit positioned outside the house. Once we get her out of the house, we'll have it searched. If he's planning a robbery, there may be evidence of it there. I don't think this is just about money. Why not? Well, because it was their wedding anniversary yesterday. They had a big row, and that's why Joel ended up on the booze. I think he's just got loads of stuff going on in his head at the moment. You think he's suicidal? <sighs> I don't know. Well, whatever he's up to, we need to put a stop to it now. Let's go. What's going on? Have you found Joel yet? No, we've got officers out looking for him. Why? What's going on? Lucy, Joel has a gun. <laughs> Why would Joel have a gun? We don't know yet. Are you sure? Yeah, we're sure. Look, it's just a precaution, but for your own safety, we'd like you to come to the station with us. Why? Do you think he's going to come no, here? Like I say, it's just a precaution. We think your son should come with us as well. Is he at school? Uh, yeah, but... Okay, let's go. Now? Lucy, we need to understand where Joel's at, what he might do. So, has he said anything recently? Perhaps it was something that didn't make sense at the time. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Yesterday, he suddenly started talking about moving out of London. Said he'd been thinking about Australia, that it would be a better life for us. Right, so he might be trying to get money to do that. Well, I said we won't be able to afford it. And he said... Not to worry about it. Last night, Joel bought a gun for £180. Where would he get that from? We got a couple of late benefit payments through the other day. Maybe it was out of that. Guy bought it off, Martin Croft. Have you heard of him? He's also known as Macca. I've never met him. 
I think they met about eight months ago. Maccab took his car to the garage. Joel did a good job, so they decided to go for a pint together. And that was it? They go for a drink every now and then, but yeah. You mentioned earlier that Joel hadn't been great recently. What did you mean by that? Quiet. With Johnny. He doesn't talk to me anymore. You know, I ask him if he's okay and he says he's thinking. You know, Joel was always the strong one. Me, I'm all over the place. If anything ever happened, it would always be Joel that we can count on. But now I don't... Lucy, do you think that Joel could be suffering from depression? Yeah, I've thought about it. Do you think he could do something stupid? <laughs> he already has, isn't he? Stevie. Excuse me, William. We've just had a report of an armed robbery. The suspect fits Joel's description. I better go. Police are here. Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. Inspector Smith, PC Taylor from Sunhill. Are you okay? Sorry, man, we're closed. Sorry. Shut. Well, can you tell me what happened? Um, this bloke just walks in with a gun, starts shouting, um, asking me to give him money from the till. And you were on your own, there was no manager or anyone? My boss has knocked off. It's normally quiet round about now. The place was empty. Okay. Can you talk me through your description once again? A shaved head, short beard, red checkered shirt, and he, he had a couple of cuts on his face too. I didn't know what to do. I just gave him the money. You did exactly the right thing. How much did he take? About 130. Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 1. Manson, go ahead, Smithy. I'm outside the Queen's Head Cafe. Description definitely matches Joel Fuller. Last seen leaving on foot, over. OK, I'll divert all units to the area surrounding Tilson Street. You can't be far away. That makes sense, does it? I mean, why rob this place? 130 quid's hardly going to put a dent in his debt. There's a bookie's there, there's a jeweler's down the road. Why not hit one of them? Yeah. Can we just go over a couple of things with you? The bloke that robbed you, you said he was shouting. Can you remember exactly what you said? Give me the money, everything you got. So have you seen him before? No, but I think he must have been in. Why? Well, before he asked for the money, you mentioned Dave. Who's Dave? My boss. I told him Dave wasn't here. That's when he lost it, pulled the gun out and started screaming for the money. So I think his primary motive was finding the manager Dave, not robbing the calf. Lucy Fuller works as a part-time waitress. Maybe there's a connection. So name of this cap. The Queen's Head. Thanks. Lucy, the place where you work, what's it called? Queen's Head Cafe, why? Joel's just been there. He held up a gunpoint. Looking for someone called Dave. Who's Dave? Um, my boss. Just your boss? What would Joel want with your boss? If there's something you need to tell us, now is the time. No, nothing. Right, last night the person Joel attacked was married. He was playing away from home. Might that freak him out? Should we try it again? Who's Dave? <laughs> I didn't think Joel knew. Lucy, Lucy's just admitted to having an affair with her boss at the calf, David Peters. Address and phone number. 61 Langport Road. Okay, I'll call him. Okay, I'll get it up according. Copy All units from Sierra Oscar 1. Armed suspect Joel Fuller believed to be heading. Mr. Peters. 
This is Detective Inspector Neil Manson. I'm calling from Sunhill Station. Are you at home right now, sir? Okay, please listen to me. Lock all your doors and move to the back of your property immediately. Gov. Hang on, sir. Got another incident involving a man with a firearm. It's a carjacking on Gunner Street, Silver Peugeot. Suspect vehicle now heading north towards Langport Road. Mr. Peters? Okay, move to the back of your property. Do not open the door to anybody until I tell you to do so. This is no joke. Okay, thanks, Stevie. Yeah, bye. So what's happening? They think that Joel is on his way around to Dave Peters' place. <sighs> it's okay, we've spoken to Dave, told him to keep out of sight, not to answer the door. Officers are on their way. You don't think that Joel's gonna try and keep... How long has it been going on for? Only a month. It, it's, it's nothing serious. It was just someone to be with you. I never would have left him. Does Joel know that? <laughs> now I know why you mentioned Australia. Sorry? It, yesterday. He was talking about moving away, starting again. And, and what did you say? I just laughed. I thought he was joking. I just... What am I going to do? Gov, we're just coming onto the Maycroft. We're two minutes away. OK, received. Outside Lamport Road now. We're going to make contact with the occupier. Any direction from Sierra Oscar 1. Trojan units from Sierra Oscar 2 1, stand by. Mr. Peters, this is D.I. Manson again. Okay, I need you to go to your front door. There are officers outside, just go straight to them. Take nothing but your keys, okay? Just keep calm, it'll be fine. Sierra Oscar 2 1 and Trojan units, Dave Peters is on his way out to meet you now. Over. Received. There he goes. One down. Sierra Oscar, we've got a sighting of a stolen grey Peugeot. It's number November 894 Romeo Tango Hotel. Joel Fuller is at the wheel. We're following him. Looks like he's heading for Langport Road. Received. Trojan units are in position at Dave Peter's house, ready and waiting. Over. Looks like they got there just in the nick of time, doesn't it? Put him over. What? I want you to put him over. You've got no chance. Well, I can't just watch him make things worse for himself. I know where he's at. I can help him. <sighs> no. Look, once he turns that corner into Langport Road, he's in CO19 hands. Everything changes. You know that. Exactly. Joel doesn't know what he's doing, Smithy. <sighs> Look, if he raises that gun, they'll shoot him. I said no. If they shoot you... It will be his doing. I 
pass it. I was right not to pull Joel over. But it could have gone the other way, but it didn't. Just wish he'd had the chance to stop things himself. But you don't know that he'd have taken that chance, do you? That went well? Yeah. Did we arrest Croft? Yeah. And we found three handguns in the search, so good news. All right? Yeah. OK, well, let's get him interviewed and processed. How's Lucy? Confused. I said I'd come and find out how he is. Confused. It's fit for interview. All right, I'll get back to Lucy. Can you show him to interview room one? Go. Thank you. We shouldn't be interviewing him like that. It's not right. The FMA's deemed him fit. Well, what's he said in there? Not a lot. Exactly. Look, I I'm going to speak to him before we interview. He deserves a chance. Just on the Why are you doing this? Is this the caring or the curious, Stevie? You don't need to prove that you were right about Joel. It doesn't matter now. I'm not doing it for me. Thanks, Leon. How you doing, Joel? Joel, we're going to interview you shortly, but before we do that, I'd like you to see our doctor again. But this time, I, I want you to talk to him. Talk to him? Be open with him about everything. Look, you're in a lot of trouble. And if you're honest about how you've been feeling, then our FME might deem you unfit for interview and get you seen by a psychiatrist. You think I've lost it? I'm not saying that. You're not yourself at the moment, are you? Mitigating circumstances could go in your favour at court. Why do you think I'm not myself at the moment? Well, I've spoken to Lucy and I know things have been tough. You've spoken to her? I know you've got money troubles. Anything else? If she didn't mention the affairs she's been having, Yes, she did. You've had a lot to deal with. And that's why I'm sat here, is it? No, I don't believe you're a criminal. No? No. You don't think I'm capable of, of, Joel, of doing that? I'm trying to help. You're trying to help me? You're trying to help me? Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. But I think we're a bit late for that, don't you? You can still salvage something from this. Oh, because I didn't know what I was doing? Yes. That I wasn't aware I, I, I had a gun in my hand with bullets in it and I was going to go around and shoot the guy that... F I don't think you were going to go through with it. Is that what you think? You're not a killer, Joel. It's not in you. Yeah. <laughs>
understood. You did. <sighs> but sometimes understanding just isn't enough, is it? But what you did today was you stopped a man from getting shot and Joel Fuller from being charged with murder. Look, you couldn't have done any more for him. Not your problem is. You didn't eat your pudding. <laughs> oh, Sarge. Joe Fuller's asking to speak to you. I thought we should move away, maybe Australia, get a fresh start. I said I'd make it happen. She just laughed at me. Said it wasn't in me. I couldn't have done it. Shot that guy. You were right. I'm not up to much, am I? sat in a pub and then out of the blue for no apparent reason one of them bolts the other the question is why the answer is because he'd lost everything and when that happens nothing matters anymore good night Stevie this morning, who did you come with? Clara. She's dead. Oh, we've got a body. We've got another witness for you, Neil. A boyfriend's seen a car hanging around recently. They said the police were here. I didn't realise it was you. What do you make of Julia? I'm sorry? I'm just wondering why this case is feeling so complicated. 